Somebody you can have as three minutes time as you want. As much time as I want? No! Wow! <laughs> awesome. No! <laughs> so my name is Jay Hanna, and I'll try to be coughing into this and not into this. Sorry, Marcus. I, I, I'll try not to germ up your equipment here. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear me. Hopefully I won't be coughing the whole time. Um, my name is Jay Hanna, and I work for a consulting company out of New York. And right now I'm assigned to an ad agency, and we're doing a lot of expath. And I made the mistake of saying so. I said, ooh, that's a pretty cool trick. When Nick Nisi was within earshot, and he's like, oh, you got to give a talk. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> so here I am, and I'm going to see what I can do. <clears throat> this is my brother. He's getting his uh, feet eaten by fish in Malaysia. Um, my brother works for uh, a company that fixes uh, weather systems at airports all around the country. And so he logs into his corporate VPN and he gets the status board. And the status board is about 300 miles long. And he's only responsible for like 5% of those darn things. He doesn't care about the other 300 pages of the stuff. He cares about 5% of it. And he called me and said, hey, you're a computer guy. <clears throat> what I need you to do is take this thing that's in my private VPN and make it usable for me. Just reduce the stuff. I only want to see some of the stuff. You know, so being an old school Perl guy, what I did is I thought, oh, hey, procedural, right? So I'll go in here and I'll start looping everything. I'll grab your input and I'll do a table extract and I'll loop on all the tables and then I'll loop on all the rows and all the rows that happen to be a data element if the attribute title starts with one of the things you care about for the first three characters, you know, I'll clear that out. <clears throat> and one of the JavaScript smarty pants said, well, why don't you use a CSS selector for that? And I said, oh, right, yeah, like, so a year and a half ago, I was doing some jQuery, and we did a lot of CSS selectors, and you can do stuff like this. You can just say, hey, on that specific table that has the ID grid, for all the TDs where the title starts with foo, right, do stuff to that. And probably most people are familiar with CSS selectors. <clears throat> so if you use jQuery, you can wrap that thing, and you can do whatever you want to it. So here what we're doing is we're applying CSS to it. And we're saying display none on that thing, right? So now, with one statement, instead of, you know, six pages of procedural code, <laughs> poof, all this stuff disappears. It's like magic, which everyone here might already know. <clears throat> and then the fancy pants JavaScript people said, hey, make it a bookmarklet. And I said, what's a bookmarklet? And they said, all you have to do <laughs> is put your code somewhere, anywhere, and then you just, like, drag it into the browser toolbar, and then you click it, and it just works. And I said, but I was already installing Perl on my brother's Windows machine. <laughs> trying to get his VPN going. So, anyway, so if you go into this, uh, into this repository, you'll see the procedural code, and then it's all gone. And the, the tag says uh, Perl is dead, along with JavaScript bookmarklets. Anywho, there's a, another technology called XPath, and it's very similar to, uh, to CSS selectors. <clears throat> so if you have, like, deep cascading documents, and these can be HTML documents or XML documents or probably other things that I don't know. Um, you can say things like, hey, in the XML, this happens to be an XML example, in the result entities, find an entity where there is a type attribute, and the type attribute is, the value is foo. <clears throat> so here's an example maybe of what an XML document that does that might look like. So here we find a type attribute, and its value is foo down in here, yeah? And then you can do things to that. You can say, oh, hey, show me the count of those things. How many of those things are there? Yeah? Interrupt me anytime. And then in my case, what I do is I wrap that in a testing framework. So because what I care about is I care about verifying, I care about asserting that there are exactly two of these things, whatever these things are. And so the testing framework I'm using is called this, but you can use whatever you want. And I want to verify that we have exactly two foos because I have this humongous API and all the, I'm making 15 API calls and then on my 16th API call I want to do another git on the bar foos and verify that there's exactly two bar foos. Does that make any sense? I hope. <clears throat> so, uh, what was that one? <laughs> uh, okay, so this is verifying is is two, and if it's not two, it'll say, hey, I was expecting two, and I got four, or whatever. In this framework that I use, there's other things, and I'm sure your framework of choice has testing frameworks that do all these same things. So OK just says, hey, this thing has to be true. Is says, hey, I know exactly what this is supposed to be, and it's supposed to be this, and if it's not that, let me know. Like throws a regular expression at it, and says, hey, 
this thing has to match this regex. And if it doesn't, that fails. And tell me, tell me what the text was that didn't match. And unlike says, no matter what happens, this thing that I'm telling you cannot be <coughs> right. Yeah. Boom. All right, but there's all kinds of fancy stuff in XPath. Am I out of time yet? Um, here's one called last. So like in all of your entities, you can grab the last one with these brackets and stuff. But last isn't the only thing you can do. <clears throat> uh, more about that later in the slides, I think. So one slash means root node. Two slashes means anywhere under whatever the current node is. Yeah. The period is an alias for current node. Dot dot is a parent node. If you want to talk about attributes, that, that's the at symbol in XPath syntax. So if I want all foo nodes, I can just say foo, and that'll give me all the foo nodes, right? In either HTML or XML or other things, I'm sure. Any SGML variants or whatever the cool kids are using nowadays. <laughs> if you want specifically the root foo node, right? It's slash foo. If you want all the barred children of all foos, it's this third one here. But this third one here is immediate barred children, and the fourth one is there can be a bar anywhere under the foo. I don't care how many levels down you have to go. If you find a bar, I want that one, as long as it's under a foo somewhere. And the last one says, hey, all the foo attributes, whatever they are. So maybe you want all the IDs, or all the versions, or all the SRCs, or whatever. <clears throat> so these things are uh, so these things are called predicates. You can get the first one, the last one, and you can get the penultimate one if you want. You can get all of them where the position is less than three, so one and two, the position of each one, right? One and two are less than three. <clears throat> Here I want all the foos where there is a bar attribute of any kind. I don't care what it is, but it has to have a bar attribute on it. The second one, it has to be a good bar. <laughs> I think DJ's dugout is a good bar, I'm not sure. But you can also do greater than, so you can say, hey, the value of this thing has to be greater than this or less than this. And if you wanted to grab a list of spendy books, you can grab the titles, right, of all the books in the store where the price is greater than 35, and price is an attribute of the book <coughs> element. Yeah. And you can do wildcards. So while you're stringing these crazy things together for your humongous B2B application, and it's 50 layers deep, you can just say, hey, star, whatever. <laughs> <clears throat> at star is to grab whatever attribute. I don't care what the attribute is, I just want all the attributes. Node is any node. I'm reading your slides, I shouldn't do that. I thought it sounded great. <laughs> <laughs> yep. What if you want multiple things? What if you want all the titles and all the prices of all the books? Well, you can use a or the pipe, sorry. Use the pipe symbol and grab multiples. And then there's these XPath axes. So all of these are reserved words in front of two colons. So if you want any ancestor named something, you can say ancestor colon colon something. But you get the ancestor or the siblings, the parents, So if I want all the books that are children of whatever current node I'm on, right, because I went blah, 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 here I am, and then any child, dash, dash, or sorry, colon, colon, book, those are immediate children. Descendants are children, grandchildren, it doesn't matter how deep it has to go. Parents, you only have one parent when you move up the hierarchy, you have exactly one parent, but you have lots of ancestors. If you're deep in the hierarchy, you'll have lots of ancestors. So earlier we saw like greater than 35, you can say less than, less than, equal to, you can say or, or mod, you can divide, etc. That's it. So I stole all of those examples from W3 schools, well more or less. So you can check out W3 schools XPath. Uh, and then, again, I, I work for this company, and we've got some capacity right now, depending on what you're interested in. So if we can help you with anything, let us know. Thanks.